Welcome back to Inside City Hall. It has been one year since the New York City Housing Authority launched Next Generation NYCHA, its 10-year plan to address a range of problems afflicting the city's massive public housing system. The plan was designed to help the Housing Authority by reducing enormous deficits and making much-needed capital improvements to buildings as well as safety improvements. Joining me now to talk about the program's progress and more, we've got the chair and CEO of the New York City Housing Authority, Shola Olatoye. Always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, Errol. Um, we, we just got some information this afternoon, I'm sure you saw it also, uh, that uh, Greg Floyd, who represents many of the NYCHA employees, as well as the president of the PBA, have uh, put out a statement saying that there's been an 8.9% jump in major crimes at, uh, at, at NYCHA developments and that um, this is in part a staffing issue, that there are not enough cops and so forth, stuff that may be outside of your purview. Mm -hmm. But the last time we spoke, um, we talked about some of the safety improvements mm -hmm. that you were talking mm -hmm. about, replacing locks and getting more lighting right. and getting rid of the scaffolding and, and so forth. Does, does this jump that they're talking about, does it suggest that there's a need to um, change, improve, or accelerate some of the safety measures? Right. So look, I think one of the things that we was, was really baked into the work of Next Generation NYCHA was a safe, clean, and connected community. And you know what we have done, what the mayor has, has led, uh, is an investment in how can we ensure that the physical buildings are secure. So whether it's through this year, uh, installing more than a thousand cameras in 18 developments around the city, um, the launching a major roof replacement campaign, um, and and investing in our staff, uh, as well as in those 15 developments where the mayor and a number of city agencies have invested even more resources, we're starting to see some real movement on some of some of these issues. So, you know, I look. This is a multifaceted issue. Mm -hmm. Crime is is is, is a there's, it's a science as well as an art in terms of uh, uh, when things change. Um, what we have been focused on is making sure that the resources we receive are deployed, that we are, are, are working to keep our residents safe by having doors locked and locks on and lights, lights on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think how, you know, NYPD chooses to deploy their staff is obviously, you know, one that the mayor and the commissioner will make decisions. But our focus has to be on, you know, what are we doing to ensure that the physical buildings are, are, are secure? Well, when they, when they, um, when the numbers suggest, I'm taking their numbers mm -hmm. as accurate for now. I don't, I, I don't know if you've vetted them yet, but when they say there's been a spike of 22% in, in, in robberies and, mm -hmm. and, and that sort of a thing, doesn't that threaten to sort of undo some of the progress of the other parts of the plan if people feel fundamentally unsafe in their homes? Look, people, everyone deserves to feel safe in their homes, and I, I have not seen their numbers, and, you know, but I, but I think ultimately um, it's, it's regardless of the numbers, it's people's perception, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we have been so focused on is how do we um, re literally, literally bring light into communities, so whether it's at the polo grounds where we just unveiled a major lighting effort, four point, almost four million dollar lighting effort there, how do we engage residents in a conversation about safety in their communities with the launch of our new public safety advisory committee uh, that, in that has law enforcement, residents, community partners, the housing authority at the table, you know, those are the things that we can be focused on. Those are the things that I think residents will see as a demonstrable uh, uh, commitment to mm -hmm. keeping them safe. You know, this is everyone's focus and everyone's and everyone's uh, attention needs to be focused on how NYCHA residents um, should enjoy the same level of safety as the rest of New York. When we see these big takedowns, um, these um, uh, roundups of mm -hmm. dozens of uh, mostly young men mm -hmm. uh, in Manhattan and Brooklyn and around the city and it's these joint task force are being hit with federal conspiracy charges and so forth. Why is it or how is it that NYCHA is the place where these places, th these, these gangs get rooted? You know, well, so, so a couple things. One, I think it's important to note that the, the last takedown it was in and around the housing authority. Some mm -hmm. of some of the some of the activity was on our campuses. Some of it wasn't. Um, look, I think this is clearly an issue that law law enforcement professionals have have studied. They know the goings and comings of these the perpetrators uh, who are running these types of uh, businesses in in our communities um, and are making you know ju wise judgments to remove the threat and. And, mm -hmm. you know, from our perspective, um, all we can do is cooperate as fully as, as possible, make sure that our residents 
uh, our, 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 our responsibility in terms of keeping them safe is, is what we can do in terms of the building, mm -hmm. um, making sure the lights are on, making sure that where there are dark places, they are well lit. We have a lot of work to still do. Um, but, I, you know, I think this, it has to be a coordinated effort. And, and that is, I think, a new enhanced level of collaboration between the Housing Authority and PD is what we're seeing. Uh, let's talk about some of the other elements of the, the, the one-year plan. I saw that um, dozens of uh, senior centers and, and other kind of community centers have been shifted uh, uh, out of your purview and over to the Department for the Aging, where on some level they probably should have been a long time ago. Yeah, you know, look, I think this is something that we uh, continued uh, as part of uh, really a, a, a recommitment to our core business of being a landlord and being and trying to be a better one and how do we improve what's happening in people's homes there's no question that uh, some of our most vulnerable residents um, have to have access to services and programming and that's why we've actually restructured our work so that we will now have social workers that are actually focused at our senior developments um, it's we really should be in better partnership with our colleagues at the Department for the Aging, at the Department for Youth and Community Development, who are trained professionals with these particular populations. And I re think our job is really about partnerships mm -hmm. and providing data uh, and really measuring the outcomes. But let's leave that kind of work to the professionals and, and, and make sure that NYCHA can be uh, the best landlord to the more than 400,000 New Yorkers who call Well, and as, as a landlord, um, there's the, um, the, the undramatic but essential work of doing things like replacing roofs Absolutely. and there's been a lot of progress in Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We have, we're, we're almost 20 of the 67 roofs that are scheduled to be replaced this year are they're under construction. This is part of the mayor's $300 million uh, that he's invested in the Housing Authority for our, our roof replacement campaign. We're in construction at more than 20 developments that were affected by Hurricane Sandy. Um, there's a lot of work happening uh, within uh, the Housing Authority. We, I think, a very important goal of NextGen was to stabilize the organization so that we could deal with the major capital issues. I'm proud to say for the second year in a row, we balanced the budget. We have, we're projecting, essentially breaking even in, mm -hmm. in 2016. That is, the, the, the news there is, we now should have the ability to focus on that core work of responding to people uh, when they call for issues in their apartment. We've reduced our wait time from uh, 21 days last summer to about six days in some of our hot mom developments. There's more work to do, no, mm -hmm. no doubt. Um, and most importantly, residents have to see a change in their home and their development. And that's why we think our efforts around our uh, expanded hours initiative is so important uh, because it really is about um, creating a safer, cleaner place for people and to live. Expanded hours was about um, changing the work rules, which would require overtime if, um, if some of the porters and other uh, maintenance staff um, had to work beyond, say, four or five o'clock on any given day. You've got them to work some split shifts. Yeah, look, we, we, we came to an agreement with our colleagues at 237, and it was really, this was really about customer service, right? Not about work rules. This is about customer service mm -hmm. and creating some flexibility for our employees. So with our colleagues at 237, we figured out how to provide expanded hours of service from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. at 12 uh, selected developments. And starting in July, those residents should see, and it is our business and our job to execute now, mm -hmm. um, a cleaner development. People won't have to take days off from work to have their repairs done because we'll be there uh, until 7.30 at night at least to, to, to do that work. Um, so again, this is about what is happening in people's homes. That is going to be how people measure the success of, of Next Generation NYCHA in the, what is truly a massive turnaround effort. Mm -hmm. and that's what this is. And I believe we've made some demonstrable progress towards that, and we still have a long way to go. You had a demonstration going on out in um, Far Rockaway, the RAD program. I yes. was wandering out, and I was wandering around in Far Rockaway over the holiday weekend. Don't ask why. <laughs> uh, the but, beach. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a part of a beach trip, and I wanted to sneak out without having to pay the toll. It's a way <laughs> to do it. But but I but I couldn't um, I, I couldn't identify which of the developments uh, it was uh, it was operating. Yeah. So this is uh, out in Rockaway. It's mm -hmm. Bay Bay Side. Um, Ocean Bay, and it is, um, we are, we've released the RFP for a developer partner to, to begin uh, essentially delivering millions of dollars of, of new capital repairs to that development. Um, we will, we expect to uh, choose a partner um, in early September, and th that work will begin um, shortly and thereafter. I mean, the, middle, the minute you talk about millions from an outside developer, people just assume privatization, uh, loss of control mm -hmm. and eventually mm -hmm. sort of uh, upscaling or changing of the 
of the fundamental structure mm -hmm. and of the rents. Mm -hmm. What's going to stop that from happening? So look, one of the am amazing things um, that this administration uh, has made a commitment to from day one is that um, we are preserving public housing in New York City. Unlike other places across the country, which are knocking them down, relocating people, dispersing people, whatever, what have you, we have made a commitment to preserve public housing in New York City. We've also acknowledged that we need we need help to do this. We need to figure out how we in create an infusion of new dollars to do those important repairs in people's homes. So it's going to look different in New York. We're going to have a, co a level of tenant protection such that the rights that people enjoy as public housing residents will be the same in the new development uh, uh, at, at RAD and, and potentially f at future develop at the Bayview d uh, development and future developments. Um, we've made commitments that are different than perhaps the other parts in other parts of what, the country. What's in it for the developer? Why are they participating? Look, you know, this is, the, it, New York City has a robust community development and affordable housing sector. There is a machine in which is at work. It's the, through the use of low-income housing tax credits, uh, uh, tax-exempt bonds, and other tools, federal tools. Um, developers can make their desired and needed uh, profit while also leveraging uh, private capital for us to make the needed repairs. This is the only tool that is coming from Washington to preserve public housing. Mm -hmm. New York City cannot afford to stand still and not be a part of it. But we have to ensure that residents' rights are protected and that their homes are protected. People's rents will not increase because of the use of this tool and the rights that they currently enjoy as a public housing resident will be extended to them. So in our last minute, what's the, the the index of success that you check most frequently to let yourself know that the 10-year the plan is on track? I look at how long it's taking us to do repairs and, and the productivity of our workers. I and tried to use your, your My NYCHA app, but as a non-resident, it You cannot use it. You have to be a you resident. Have to take that off. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be a resident of the Housing Authority. So, uh -huh. so every morning, I look at um, those reports, and I look at how long certain trades are taking, how long does it take for an exterminator to, to get work done, how long does it take for a painter to get work done. Mm -hmm. And through some of the work that we're doing, we've seen our exterminators in the beginning of the year uh, take more have more than 12 tickets per exterminator now that's down to three so what that means for the resident is that they should be getting their work done faster because mm -hmm. people are we're closing tickets faster we have a lot more work to do on the painting and plastering front as our residents surely can attest to but when you take on an assignment like this which is a turnaround effort. You have to be very clear about your objectives, and it was about stabilizing the organization so that we can deal with the larger capital needs, and that is what we're doing. Okay, we will wish you the best of luck, and Thank we you. will keep following. Thanks Absolutely. so much for coming by. Thank you, Errol. All right, we're gonna take a short break now. Coming up, we'll talk with the commissioner of our city's Department of Veterans Services about the increased number of resources that are available to city veterans. Later on in the political rundown, Curtis Lewa and Person Barrera weigh in on Donald Trump's attack on the media and much more from the campaign trail. We're back in a minute.